I offer these words this evening in loving memory of my mother, Goldie Seidner Apt, and my husband, Marvin Schindler, and also in loving memory of our dear friend, Bobby Spiegler. All three were devoted members of our very special community. I honor, too, my son, Neil, who grew up at Tachia and still thinks of our community so fondly. Along with his wife, Liz, and their son, Oliver, in Spokane, Washington, they continue some of our traditions, and they are my heart. A while back, Rabbi Alana asked me whether I would offer the lay leader drash on Kol Nidre. I was honored to be asked, but I hesitated. I thought about what I could offer of a meaningful and profound nature for this, the highest of all of our holy days. During my 50 years in the academic world, I have given presentations too numerous to count, but never in this setting or about this subject. I thought about it for a few moments and considered possible directions with Rabbi Alana. Special themes, the past year, and personal reflections, all with some underpinnings from Torah and teachings from some great scholars and rabbis. Rabbi Alana encouraged me to make it personal. I agreed, and here I am, Hineni. Moreover, I told Rabbi Alana that it just so happens that my 78th birthday falls on Kol Nidre. So, perhaps Bashert meant to be. I believe in Bashert. As Ruth Bader Ginsburg, a blessed memory said, I'm a very strong believer in listening and learning from others. I have spent time doing research and reading about the High Holidays, itself a meaningful activity, even if I had not been doing it to develop my text for this evening. Indeed, it has been a really important time for me, looking back, looking forward, and especially looking inward. Rabbi Michael Strassfeld offers an interesting drash in our Mahsur. Why does Yom Kippur follow Rosh Hashanah? Should it not be the other way around? First, a settling of accounts for the previous year, and then a celebration of a new year with its promise of change and its potential for betterment. Is it not necessary to clear away the old, to repent for the past, before we can really welcome the new? Rabbi Strassfeld's insights embrace some major Holy Day themes that I have highlighted. The hope for a new year must precede a systematic review of the old, for it shakes us awake to the possibility of renewal. The new year calls on us to join in the struggle to transform ourselves. The shofar blasts are meant to arouse us to the new possibilities that await us. Once conscious of the new year and what it offers, we are ready to look back at our past. Conscious that life can be as sweet as apples dipped in honey, we approach Yom Kippur looking inward with the hope for growth and change as we look forward. Hope, renewal, transformation, a look back, a look inward, a look forward. Solemnly and with a grateful heart, we begin Kol Nidre at home by lighting a memorial candle in memory of the death of loved ones. Then there is often also the communal lighting of a Yisker candle, also Tachia's tradition. Rabbi David Teutsch says that we do this to commemorate the losses suffered by our community as a whole, not only those who have lived among us, but also our ancestors and all those who died for the cause of our people's future in the world and those we lost in the Holocaust. Indeed, the latter resonates with me intensely. In 2009, I published Revision of a Life, My Mother's Holocaust Story, which includes not only her journey and internment in a forced neighbor, Nazi labor camp in Poland, but also the experiences of other family members, and my own as well, growing up with the history up close and personal. The, mem the memoir is among all the publications in my long academic career, certainly the most meaningful to me, 
Permit me to share a brief passage. I'm the only child of Holocaust survivors. As is the case with most of the second generation, I am one of very few of our family members left in the world. I never knew my grandparents or a host of other relatives who could have filled my bank of memories and experiences while growing up. Instead, they were photographs to me and stories. I always felt different in that regard as a child, except when I was around others who had suffered similar losses, even before they were born. My recollection of childhood memories is incomplete, but the leitmotif is certainly the Holocaust. My mother would say with both grief and the pride of survival, I am from the Holocaust. I am the survivor, the only one left from my big family. This is my mother's story, but it is also my story. It is unique because of who she was and who I am, and because neither her experiences nor mine are exactly duplicated anywhere in the universe. This is so important within the context of Holocaust memoirs. Only individually unique stories enable us to approach the Holocaust as a catastrophic period in history from a human perspective, to get close to it, especially if one is a member of the second generation without firsthand experience. The real power of Kol Nidre lies for me in the precious gathering of community, in prayer, and especially in song. Song that inspires and motivates us, that lifts us up into the heights of spirituality, beauty, and love. The themes of death, mourning and memory, as well as life and hope, encompassing renewal and transformation, as well as Le Dorvador from generation to generation, stand out for me as well in looking back, inward and forward. We focus on teshuva, tefillah and tzedakah, repentance, prayer, charitable deeds. The books are sealed on Yom Kippur. The concept of writing in books is the source of the common greeting during this time. May you be inscribed and sealed for a good year. We know that on Yom Kippur we pray for atonement for our wrongs between us and God, reconciliation with or forgiveness from people we may have wronged during the course of the year must be settled with them. God does not do that work for us. These are days of introspection, mercy, and forgiveness, days dedicated to repentance, to examining one's conscience, and to making amends. Rabbi Rami Shapiro writes, we seek to deal kindly but honestly with ourselves. This does not entail the destruction of our own souls, our own worlds. We freely admit our failings and create our atonements. No excuse, no escape, just an honest seeing into the truth that we might correct our path and set off once more toward the good each of us seeks. We seek to be the best versions of ourselves that we can be for ourselves and those around us, family, friends, community. To do good in the world, to repair the world, tikkun olam. We have likely all lost loved ones during the past year. Precious family members, beloved friends, teachers, community members, people across the globe. This past year has been a profound one for me, forcing me to grapple even more with my own mortality. The 18th anniversary of my mother's death, the 20th anniversary of my husband's death, and since last Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, I have lost nine good friends, including one friend in our community whom we all lost on June 2nd, Bobby Spiegler. Our July 6th memorial service honored Bobby with a celebration of her life. On September 7th, at the Detroit Jews for Justice Myra Wolfgang Awards, the Bobby Spiegler Lifetime Achievement Award was launched and awarded. In remembering and honoring Bobby, we are brought close to these words from Pirkei Avot. On three things the world stands, on Torah, on worship, 
and on caring deeds, on loving kindness. Bobby's life was a testament to these words and to tikkun olam. She loved our Tichia community dearly. She focused on Torah and worship in her life. She always sought to be the best version of herself. Bobby looked back inward and forward as she lived her life with courage and determination to do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with God. Bobby was fiercely committed to social justice work and she contributed with a full heart and hard work to many organizations in our community. She was kind, she was caring, she loved her family and friends. We miss her terribly. Bobby also taught us a profound and powerful lesson in courage and spiritual strength as she was dying. Those days were heart-wrenching. Early in the morning on May 22nd, just 10 days before her death, Bobby sent me this text. I'm not going to make it. Love you. Thanks for everything, Ross. I received that text with heartbreak and a flood of tears for Bobby, for her family, for our community, and for myself as her friend. We visited and sang to Bobby. We prayed with her. We comforted her, knowing that we were saying goodbye. So painful. One of the last things she said to me was, I can't believe that I will no longer be in community with Tahia and DJJ. That was foremost on her mind and in her heart. I told her that she would always be with us in heart and mind, in prayer and in remembrance. Bobby knew that she was in a tender, gentle circle of love and support among her family and friends and in her larger community. That knowledge, her strong faith, and the special comfort of Rabbi Alana and Bobby's family helped her through her final days. Death and memory are set in relief on Yom Kippur, but so are hope and life. And as long as we speak the names of all those we have lost, as long as we remember them, they remain alive in and for each of us. Bobby was a person of continuing hope and vibrant life. She was a special inspiration to me, as were the family members I remember on this Yom Kippur. As Reconstructionists, whatever and however we believe, we may see God as a powerful force for goodness and holiness in the world, indeed the universe. We may consider the concept of God as a force within us that inspires us to strive to be loving and caring people and to do good work. With this as a backdrop, let us look at the themes of hope and life, as to live each day is to live in and with hope. Having been a member of our beloved community for 45 of its 46 years, I have witnessed with gratitude and acknowledged with joy the amazing transformation of our congregation, especially in the last year. Building community and membership connections caring for individuals in our community, necessary fundraising and development, spiritual practice and ever more creative religious services and educational programming for both adults and children, a continuing commitment to social justice, the beautification, safety and accessibility of our space, and fruitful collaboration with local synagogues, churches and other organizations, as well as national and international groups. It is all about making connections and building community. We take pride in our diversity, our mission, our spiritual home, and our beloved members. Our progressive, participatory, and wholeheartedly inclusive Jewish community represents hope and life within the context of transformative change and renewal, as well as the intentional practice of Lador Vador. We live in a broken world, and so often we feel broken. The pandemic, war, climate change, injustices of all kinds, attacks on democracy. We search for healing. We search for return and repair. We search for wholeness. We search for a way or ways to become our best selves individually and within community. It is about constant transformation and renewal. We take stock of who we are, 
where we are, and who we want to be. We set intentions for next year. We approach the next year with courage and spiritual strength, with more insight and reflection, with hope and with love. I am moved and inspired by Albert Einstein's powerful message. Strange is our situation here upon Earth. Each of us comes for a short visit, not knowing why, yet sometimes seeming to divine a purpose. From the standpoint of daily life, however, there is one thing we do know, that we are here for the sake of others, above all, for those upon whose smile and well-being our own happiness depends, for the countless unknown souls with whose fate we are connected by a bond of sympathy. I realize how much my outer and inner life is built upon the labors of people, both living and dead, and how earnestly I must exert myself in order to give in return as much as I have received and am still receiving. Rabbi Jill Jacobs, Executive Director of Trua, the Rabbinic Call for Human Rights, offers some helpful questions for us to ponder as we move through the next 25 hours and beyond. What have you learned about yourself during these High Holy Days? What life changes do you want to make? Who has made a difference for you this past year, and in what ways? What impact do you want to make going forward? Toda Raba. Thank you all for being in my life and for enriching our community every single day. Very special gratitude to Rabbi Alana and Jake, who lead and inspire us every day in beautiful, meaningful ways. I am overwhelmed with gratitude for my life on Earth and in this community, and for today, for making another journey around the sun. My loved ones near and far, living and deceased, are with me this evening as I, along with all of you, continue to commit to teshuva, tefillah, and tzedakah, and to create a better world for all of us and for generations to come. Tzom kal, may you have an easy and meaningful fast. Gemar chatima tova, may we all be sealed in the book of life for good, and let us say, Amen. Amen. Yeah. Uh,